Bro, how the hell is Moxie this well adjusted? Like, for real, if you told me Moxie had even a chance of being one of the most tragic characters in Hell Boss, I would have called you a liar. But one shitty dad later, and one very unalive mother, you can't help but look at Moxie in a completely different light. We got answers to questions we didn't even know we had, while making us question old ones. So, let's take a look at Moxie's backstory, how growing up in the mob couldn't break him, but how it still molded him into the man he is today. Alright guys, time to talk about the backstory. <laughs> what the fuck, bro? Born into a mafia family in not a mafia town, Moxie's upbringing is kind of the stuff of nightmares. Raised by what some would call the worst father in hell, Crimson is the head of the family. We don't know how big said family is or how it relates to the other criminal elements, but based purely on resources and the very casual murder, it won't be a stretch to think that Crimson is a sizable and respected figure within the circle of greed. They may not be doing the best financially given his desperation to have Moxie marry, but this is not a group you should fuck with. Commanding a gang filled with imp and shark demons, decorating his home with the body parts of his victims, Crimson is as ruthless as they get, while also being obsessed with having control over everyone in his life, going so far as to kill his own wife for pushing back on trying to tell him how to raise Moxie. His only problem? Moxie was a sweet kid. Moxie, in spite of where he was growing up and what his father was like, didn't naturally gravitate towards the psychotic levels of cruelty that Grimm was trying to pressure him into. He almost executed a man, but he was just a kid who probably didn't fully understand what was going on. This infuriated his father, who far from handling anything rationally, like this man looked at a little kid struggling to cut steak and was about ready to disown him. Crimson, even at this early stage, resented his son for not living up to the insane standard he was setting for him. This eventually leading him to resent his wife, who he no doubt blamed for coddling their kid. You know, she helped him cut his food and stopped him from killing a prisoner. Typical mom stuff. Hating that his son had a positive influence in his life, Crim killed her. Now, he probably did this for a number of reasons. Cutting the steak was a pretty galling move. But another less important fact was that she openly defied him. It's one thing to use positive reinforcement in private, but for her to openly defy him, to take the gun out of Moxie's hand in front of his men, that just feels like it was a step too far for someone as obsessed with the idea of control as Krim. As in this world, it is all about presentation. It is all about how you are perceived by others. So the fact that a woman was able to stand up to him, yeah, he... He did the thing. That's toxic masculinity for ya. He ended up hitting her in an argument, with her leaving after that. Because he killed her. Then in an act that feels like a personal F you to his wife, Crimson forces his son to kill a prisoner. Horns cut off, bound and gagged, with a nice little smiley face drawn on, because that's the level of care he's giving to his child. This is horrific. Maybe even worse, as he takes this traumatizing moment to drill into his son's head, that this isn't about doing what's necessary. It isn't about needing to be cruel, it's about him. Let this be a lesson, Moxie. This is what happens when you cross me. Yeah, Krim doesn't want Moxie to be the next heir to the family. None of this was some messed up desire to strengthen or toughen up his son. All of this was Krim trying to assert his dominance over Moxie, to intimidate his son into being obedient. This backstory is so dark. Like, it went places I was not expecting. However, it didn't work, did it? Yeah, in spite of everything, Krim failed to bully his son into the cruel dead inside mafioso that he desperately wanted, with a lot of that credit going to Moxie's mother, the original Eminem. Moxie loved his mom, and that makes perfect sense. He's his dad was a bully. So when you're looking for positive reinforcement, of course he was going to go to her. She was warm, affectionate, and most importantly, not a sociopath. She provided an alternative to what Grimm was selling, with his happiest moments with his family all being tied to her, opposed to the cold terror he felt once she was gone. All this informs so much of Moxie's character. It gives us a great explanation for why Moxie is so good with guns. Like, yeah, this is hell, but Moxie is an expert. The Mafia's been probably trading these things for years, and he's always been around guns and bullets. But it also recontextualizes a lot of his decisions. 
As yes, he is a killer. He will waste people with threatened and murder people on demand. But when it comes to killing people with families, or more importantly, mothers, Moxie's own baggage tends to get in the way. So he can't bring himself to let Blitz kill the mom in episode 1. As he's been there, and didn't just ruin his family, it destroyed it. Even when he finds out that these hillbillies are a bunch of serial killing Satanists, Mox still tries to prevent his worst case scenario, going out of his way to try to make the dad take responsibility for his crimes, to give these kids some stability, and potentially save them from what he had to go through. Well, she tried. At least, you know, she... Now, after this episode, there's one line that kind of just seemed weird in hindsight. I was born here too. I have some fat in me. So yeah, in spite of being raised in the ring of greed, Moxie chooses to emphasize how he was born in Wrath, telling Blitz that he was from there just like Millie, with him only tentatively talking about being partly raised in greed, which at first glance seems a little odd. But then just like how my take on Millie got roasted in a great thread that you should all definitely go check out, Vizzy Pop revealed that Moxie's mom was actually from Wrath, with her style of dress on closer inspection being actually Southern, which clears up a lot of the possible confusion about why Moxie chooses to identify more with Wrath than with greed. Because it was his mom's home, rejecting Krim and his influence, picking and choosing what parts of his past he wants to hold on to. This desire to prioritize being from Wrath isn't without its struggles, though, and kind of emphasizes just how Moxie is still out of place. Moxie, he's not country tough. A badass, definitely, but when it comes to what is perceived as manly or the standard, Moxie is about as far from the ideal as possible. If you're a demon from Wrath, you're supposed to be able to kill things with your bare hands, then go back for seconds. It's not enough to just be good with guns. You have to be tough as nails and like getting your hands dirty. Which Moxie, he's great, but that is not him. That's not his specialty. And this makes Moxie feel like he's on thin ice with Millie's parents, who are much closer to that ideal. Moxie is in a bit of a dilemma. As the home of people he'd prefer to identify with, that culture doesn't really fit who he is, and greed is everything that he hates. Though his skill set would be much more appreciated there. All this kind of just leaves Moxie without a real place to call home. If it wasn't for IMP and Millie. But before we can get to that, we gotta talk about Chaz. <laughs> what is up, party people? Chaz and Moxie honestly make way more sense than you'd think. Well, they wouldn't work right now. Back in the day though, absolutely. Mainly because Chaz is an idiot. I got a big dick. This man lied to the mafia about being rich to become a member of the mafia, then had no plan for when they found out he was broke and wearing a rental. He might have a big dick that he doesn't know how to use, but his head is emptier than a mafia pride parade. Chaz tricked Crimson into thinking he was rich, yet he potentially jeopardizes everything just to try and bang Millie or Blitz. Crimson will have some allowances, but if he's gonna embarrass the family, he needs to keep it on the DL. Chaz is reckless, he is stupid, and he is exactly the type of person who would try to sleep with the Dawn's son. Rim is already a bigot. He knew about Chaz and Moxie and referred to them as living a sissy lifestyle. It's embarrassing to him, and he does not approve. He doesn't get that Moxie's bisexual or what that even means, and even when he pretends to be okay with it, it all comes off as demeaning. Moxie probably didn't have a lot of dating options growing up. Most of the people he knows are the ones he works with, and they don't snitch in a heartbeat. Like honestly, they would have to be stupid to even consider. <laughs> what is up, party people? Moxie in his late teens to early 20s just got officiated into the mafia. Then here comes this tall green and very forward shark. Already crime adjacent, Chaz was the perfect guy for Moxie to learn in hindsight what not to do in a relationship. As yes, it was fun at first sneaking around his dad, doing jobs together. Moxie, still nervous and not sure of what to do, was able to let Chaz take the lead with all this being so new and exciting that he just went along with it. Like we don't know enough to assume that Chaz was Moxie's first boyfriend. I mean, I hope not. But Chaz is important in that Moxie got to have a relationship with another man. Again, his father's a bigot, disregards the difference between bisexuality and gay men. As far as he was concerned, everything that isn't hetero gotta go. Yet Chaz gave Moxie a chance to be with someone he could be a little bit more open with. Chaz probably wasn't listening, but it didn't matter to Moxie. While well, they got to kill people together, bang, indulge in the arts that his father definitely didn't approve of, while imperfect, Chaz, in comparison to his father, is a step closer to the right direction of who he wants to be. We don't really know how invested Chaz was with Moxie. This all could have been a scheme to marry Moxie to get officially inducted into the Mafia, and he was also already a narcissist. Yet you know, when Moxie gets trapped in a heist gone wrong after helping Chaz get out, for just a moment, he looks torn, moves to help him, 
but Chaz is more interested in saving his own skin. Hearing the police, he grabs the money and runs, leaving Moxie heartbroken and crying in prison. And then he meets Blitz. So I got a plan to get us out of this dump, but I'm gonna need some help. You think you can give me a hand? I need to get out to my daughter. Blitz, like always, is able to unintentionally win over Moxie, who, and let's be honest, may have seen him as a replacement Chaz for a half second there. Talking non-stop, dragging him into a crazy plan, but Blitz, for all the drama he causes, genuinely cares for others. He cares about his daughter, which to Moxie is a definite green flag. And from there, he finally finds a place to belong. Blitz is a nightmare. He is a home invading stalker, but he doesn't care about anyone else's baggage. And from there, Moxie would go on to meet Millie, who loved him for him, giving us the most wholesome relationship in hell, free from the judgment of his dad and the rest of this god-awful society. He wasn't completely out of the clear. Years of being belittled by his father has left him with some serious self-confidence issues, holding on to criticism instead of ignoring it. Years of having to feel like he has to jump through hoops because of his father means that he is so desperate to prove himself to others, when he's fine just the way he is. But this is all a part of him coming into his own. And while he definitely didn't want to be here, it's still awesome to see Moxie stand up to his dad, that despite being afraid of him, feeling small and insignificant whenever they're together, he refuses to budge. He loves his life. He's loved all the new experiences he's had since leaving home. Millie, Blitz, the Phantom of the Opera, Moxie loves all of them more than he fears Crimson. And this dude straight up threatens to kill his dad. Crimson has shaped Moxie into who he is. It wasn't the way Crimson wanted, but Moxie was able to grow in spite of that. To, gr to adapt and grow past the trauma of his childhood. To embrace the legacy of a mother who never got to see him grow up. And I think that's beautiful. It also makes me kind of not care that we don't get to see him have these giant action set pieces. We do. He kills a lot of people. But he doesn't need to prove anything to anyone. He doesn't need to use violence to prove his value. That would just be him going to the same level as his dad and Striker. When he's different. He's not like them. He doesn't have to be like them. And Millie can kill more than enough people as it is. I liked Moxie as a character before, but I think I kind of love him now and I can't wait to see what they do with him next. Thank you all for watching, this has been Sarcastic Chorus. Man, I say that too much. But please, like, share, and subscribe, and let me know what you thought of Crimson. Why is he somehow hotter than Moxie? And please tell me it's not just the suit.